Welcome back to Real Community Talks, where we meet with micro-level influencers doing macro-level things. I'm your host, Matt DeSilva, and on today's episode, instead of doing a typical guest interview like we usually do, we're going to be getting a little bit more topical today. And the reason is we wanted to give you guys some more information on specific areas. So seeing as it's Valentine's Day today, we're going to be talking about relationships and everything to do with relationships. So if you guys saw the promo during the week, you had time to get in questions to us. So we're going to try our best to get these questions answered. And to do that, I secured an amazing guest. It was really hard to get this person. But the woman who actually taught me what relationship should look like, the most amazing woman I've ever met. She runs multiple business line. She is an academic. She's won multiple awards. She's a writer, an artist, and I can't even begin to describe her in a way that would do her justice. But we got my girlfriend, Miss Shannon Danielle Hayatali, to help us with this one. Shannon, thanks for being on the episode today. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. <laughs> All right. So um, to get us started, um, we, like I said, we wanted to talk about relationships. And we didn't want to just talk about typical things, but we really took some time to think this out, take your questions, group them into some themes. Um, but before we talked about relationship, because all, um, all of a sudden, you know, when you think of relationship, you automatically go to dating or you go to another person. Um, but we thought that it was important before you talk about being with the person is self-love, is learning to love yourself. So um, let's get a little bit into that and what that looks like. So I think first off, like one of the things that you always talk about is this idea of like being unable to pour from an empty cup facts right and and it's the same with dating relationships even friendships any kind of relationship right like if you're not feeding yourself mm. there's no possible way that you can sustain a relationship with another person yeah right so i think that is probably something that's super important yeah it's true and i think like if you're not able to learn how to love yourself and you can't expect someone to do it for you exactly 100 yeah. percent, right but i think a lot of people don't take the time to just learn what that looks like yeah. and like speaking from past relationships myself like i took a, I took a before we got together um i was in a relationship then i took four years off of dating but i really learned to just enjoy my presence like jody ann said in one of my episodes she's like She's like, I like dating me. Like, I, I think I'm fun, right? Yeah. And I think we don't take the time to do that, right? Because one, I think, let me just get this straight. I think that we were created to mm, be in community. Fox. Sorry, I just wanted to try that. <laughs> when she first met me, that's all she kept saying. Every time I'd say something, she'd be like, mm, fast, because she's just so, you know, obsessed with me. She just wants to copy me. Okay. No, I'm joking. Um, but no, I think it's, it's fair to say that we were meant to be in community, right? Um, that we were meant to be with someone, right? And, and yeah. Feeling lonely is a normal thing, right? Um, but I think part of that is a lot of people in that desperation for loneliness um, sacrifice and go into relationships too early or just want to go from relationship to relationship that they don't have the time to actually yeah. learn who they are. But I think I think something important to note there as well, though, is that you can never reach a stage mm -hmm. or a state of perfection, Facts. right? Yeah. That you're continually evolving and growing and developing as a person as you heal and as you grow. Yeah. And so in that way, you're still going to be a work in progress as you enter into relationship with someone or as you get to know someone. Yeah. Right. So the emphasis on continually growing mm. instead of perfection. Yeah. Right. So like this process over perfection, mm. I think is something that um, sometimes people might be cautious or weary of like dating because they feel that they're not perfect yet. Yeah. But I don't think you ever will be. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like, like exactly what you said, like that's subjective to like your healing, your timing and when it just happens, right? I don't think you're ever going to be, I need to have this, 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 this before I do it. Not yeah. that those things aren't, you know, wise to think about, um, but it's true. Yeah. yeah. And like, I think another part of that as well is that, like you said, like you got comfortable with your singleness, right? Yeah. You enjoyed your own company. And I think that's something that single people in their season of singleness need to learn to appreciate and understand. Mm. Because if you are part of that culture of stigmatizing the singleness, then Facts. you're going to be lonely alone. Yeah. Right. And you don't necessarily have to be yeah. 
lonely when you're alone. But isn't it funny right? how when people are in a season of singleness, they're just like, oh, couples. But then when they get into a, a relationship, then they start getting all big and then they start getting <laughs> all like cheesy. Yeah. So you're bitter now. But then when you find that right person, then you're going to be doing all the like cute stuff Like super cheesy. Exactly. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I think too, like um, some people for other reasons in their life, like maybe they want to focus on their career at that moment right maybe they want like i think it's fair men to not expect women not that i'm saying part of relationships is having babies but like to expect a woman to want to just drop her su her stuff for you to have your kid and get out of her field when she might just be dominating in what she's doing too yeah. so there's other reasons around why people are single right mm -hmm. i think it's fair to say that even if they want to be in it maybe they're not able to devote that time to the person that they would want to be with right so i think it's fair to have that personal intake and see where you're at right but then also like in that period of single sing uh, also in that period of singleness like you can still foster and develop other healthy relationships mm. right Facts. like you can elect to be single or maybe that's just like the situation you're single because no one wants you no I'm <laughs> <laughs> but like you can still make meaningful friendships and relationships right yeah um with the same gender the yeah. opposite gender whatever yeah. right and just because you're not um interested or as you said it's the circumstance hasn't presented itself for you to be dating you someone is ugly <laughs> right the circumstance hasn't presented itself for you to be dating it doesn't mean that you need to close yourself off from meeting amazing people right they calling me ugly but i'm gonna still marry a 10 though um shout outs to uh social misfits um but no it's true and i think i think that there's so many elements from every type of relationship that we have in our life that we can take and eventually apply to a dating relationship a marriage relationship and so forth like with your parents with your coworkers, yeah. with your friends with mentors right so i think part of that relationship with who you're with is holistic right and should involve so many different things right i think um, we should have also said like at the beginning which is why we're saying it now we're not professionals facts. at this yeah. and 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 we're not responsible yeah. if, like you don't get a date so. <laughs> and also that like we don't have it all figured out but yeah. i think i think having conversations about these kinds of things just make it like easier facts, yeah. for you to for you to process through it yeah um but yeah yeah and and, and don't take our advice <laughs> <laughs> now but side note like like this is how this is the dynamic of our relationship like we can sit for we hours. We always have real community. Yeah, like all the time, like whether it's on the phone or in person or even on text. Like that's basically how we met. She slid into my DMs and was like, "Yo, this DJ Khaled looking guy is sweet." I actually never said that. And then she's like, "All right, let me let me follow it." And then she hit me up and she was just like, "Yo, you're the cutest, most handsome podcaster I've ever." seen on ig i said no such thing <laughs> no, i no. actually told you like just so that this is on the record i told him that the post that he had posted <laughs> was really great that was all and right? then right wasn't that all that was all okay what? moving on anyways <laughs> uh not to be honest like at that stage of where i was at like i i can say so myself i was kind of beat still but um but anyways like that leads into our next point about yeah. talking about today's dating climate yeah and how technology has sort of like morphed mm. what courtship or what dating has looked like in the past right yeah. it's it's easier now than ever to like communicate with people to get to know people to mm. even like encounter people who you might not in your normal day-to-day -day life like from work from school yeah blah blah, blah. yeah because you can talk to people long distance you can you know what i mean mm -hmm. so even though like that whole aspect of like getting to know people might be harder yeah it's also some somewhat easier yeah it's true because i remember the first day we started talking like we had like a seven hour conversation on like ig dms yeah. um but i think that was the cool thing is because um we both vibed well and it wasn't like we were just lonely or we were just like you were i think cleaning your room that day and i was like cleaning up somewhere else too and then we just continued the conversation but i think it's important yeah. to like specify as well that there was no like intention of like oh facts of yeah. like trying to you know what i mean yeah. like, because i think i think in today's culture like when you say you're talking to someone mm. it automatically equates to you that's trying a, to get with that a good person, word preach right? it it automatically equates to you wanting to be with them yeah. wanting to like hook up with them yeah. whatever 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 right but that wasn't the case like we just genuinely were just having yeah. conversation right yeah. like 
basic yeah no i rem- i literally remember praying the week before i'm like god i guess that relationships aren't for me right now um but you know in your timing you know whatever and who would have known that that conversation started what we ended up being which is boyfriend and girlfriend if i didn't make that clear <laughs> she, she's gonna be like she, she doesn't like that kind of i oh, know i'm joking um but no it's true and i think like yeah we both weren't in a place where we were it's, it's not that we didn't want relationships as we were going through our own process we were healing from other stuff but it wasn't like we were in a, in a in desperation mode to be like i need to yeah whatever right and i think that's so important because a lot of times like you said people go looking for someone instead of just developing solid friendships which is what we did and this is a bit different for me because we like in in past relationships i dated girls from high school or like from my church or from other places where i would continually see them we literally like met on instagram and like i saw she had some mutual friends and then we ended up realizing we both lived in Malton, and I'm like, wow, what a small Shout world. Shout out to Malton. Shout out to also Manuela. Manuela, if you're watching <laughs> this, thanks for connecting us. Yeah, yeah. we owe you. We owe, we're indebted to you. Um, but no, nah, that's exactly how it happened, and we talked and, and, and stuff like that. But I was not used to that because I'm like, I need to meet someone first before I'm going to start emotionally investing into that. Because yeah. for me, and I'm not judging anyone who does this, but I don't really like having close friendships with girls because... I know myself, I'm going to catch feelings. I might settle for someone because I'm emotionally invested into that relationship and yeah. getting it for the wrong reasons. Yeah. But I think when it came to talking to Shannon, like it was just so natural and we vibed well where I was like, no, like actually talking to her makes me happy and it like makes me better at the same time. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't just like super serious, real community talk because I did that all the time. But like it was even funny, silly things that like, I'm like, yo, this girl basically is the female version of me. That's one of the reasons why I love her. I don't, because... I don't really know if I take that as a compliment. Wow. <laughs> nah, but like, but like literally there's so many things that we found out. We're like, wow, we basically had the same childhood and we didn't even know we existed until we were both in our 20s. So yeah, crazy. but I think the good, so that's the good thing about it. But the negative side about that, and we talked about this idea about tech stationships yeah. is that people can develop a relationship and even like the human psychology of the social aspect yeah. of relationship that can totally affect how people interact with in person. I remember when we messaged and called for those two months before we actually met up, which we didn't meet which up for the first took two, two months. months. Yeah, before. to get to know each even other. Even though we live like seven minutes exactly. away from each yeah. other. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but I remember the first time we were going to meet up, she's just like, are we going to be the same person that we are on the phone and that we text? Because like, I don't know if like, we're just one way or we're just fronting behind the phone yeah. fronting behind the computer type of thing yeah. right um so while those can be useful especially for things like long distance relationship it's really that human interaction like not being like like lol like when you're texting lol you're really not laughing out loud you're yeah looking like, like you this. actually need to know what this person <laughs> yeah like i need to see what your emotions yeah. look like i need to see you when we go to a restaurant see how you interact with the waiter if they bring back your food a little bit overdone, yeah. right? Those are the type of important things that beyond just getting to know someone, you could be like, okay, it's not that you pass the test per se, but it's like, I've seen you in this setting. Yeah. I've seen you and been with you through this many seasons. We've not just vibed, but maybe gone through an argument. So there's certain things that, you know, in person can only kind of really show you, right? Yeah. Um, and I think um, another thing, that we need to be mindful of when it comes to technology and the social media aspect of relationships is this hookup culture. Right? Yeah. And how like easily accessible it is to judge things from like yeah. a, what? Like swipe right or, oh, yeah. That's what you're doing. I was yeah. like, what are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> because then, wait, that was your left. Yeah. Oh, my bad. <laughs> my, my but, but anyways, Fox. yeah, like that, that swipe right, swipe left yeah. type of culture, right? Yeah. That it's so easy to like dismiss people. And so easy to invite people in just based on like physical attraction and mm. infatuation and lust that we're trying to look for love in a in a culture mm. that breeds lust. It's so true. Right? Yeah. So and I think I think it's only obvious and like it's easy to admit that sometimes we confuse the two. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's so true and and like how often do you see people like on tinder to be like i just want to have a good conversation with you no it's like it's yeah. it's generally meant for like people who want to hook up and probably of some physical type of nature yeah. and i want to acknowledge that like the physicality of a relationship is important right like we're both christian and we believe that like like 
sex is a good thing, right? It was created to be a good part of relationship, right? But, <laughs> but it, it's not the only thing, right? And yeah. if you base a relationship purely off of the physical, where's where's that communication going to come from? Where's that emotional investment that needs to come through, and and that just you know emotional intelligence that you get from just you know having relationships and with lived each other. experiences yeah. other than physical. yeah yeah because because if you if it's heavily on one side then the other things are going to suffer and then when that's let's say that stuff isn't exciting you anymore or those things aren't you yeah know, then you go somewhere else to look for 100 percent, right? right and it's yeah. like when we when we get the iphone 6 and they're like well the iphone 11 pro came out and has these many features not nah, when you base it off of that like and like speaking to that idea of going somewhere else to look for what you feel you might be lacking that's something else technology has sort of like yeah uh influenced and like taken over is that we we we're like conditioned to be unhappy with what we have facts right and like to be discontent with the things that are ours or the experiences that are ours. scroll on your ig timeline exactly so you're scrolling through your ig timeline and me and matt we go to mcdonald's and get junior tickets but low-key that's like one of my favorite things to do but anyways like and then you see people going for like these like extremely lavish pinterest like, narcity dates yeah. yeah and then and then you even though there's nothing wrong with your relationship yeah. you sometimes look at those ones in comparison and yeah it like steals the joy from true. your relationship right and then you start to look at well this is relationship goals Mine doesn't match up with these yeah. social media expectations. So there must be something wrong with yeah. my relationship. Right? And and can I be honest? And I think we both had this conversation during Christmas too. Hallmark movies don't do a brother any favor because then because then they're just like, oh, that's cute. Why aren't we cute? Stuff like that too. But like, even movies wow. and TV shows. Are you no. like throwing shade? <laughs> no, no, no. Home? Nah, but like, no, it's true. Like, I think, I think like even movies and, and, and TV and media like that can make you feel like, if you're not having those like super spontaneous natural moments that it's not amazing right it's true and we 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 both have had those moments where we're just like ah you know are we actually cute or are we not like you know what i mean because we're comparing ourselves to other people yeah right so i think one of the things like in this vein of technology and relationships that we sort of talked about was this idea of like posting or refraining from posting yeah and i remember like we had this conversation where you were upset because you wanted us to post a picture and you got all like, are you embarrassed of me? Nah, she's, <laughs> she doesn't want to post me. She's embarrassed. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And I had to like reassure you that that wasn't the reason. Yeah. But that because of the way that social media has like opened this door for people to just be directly in your life. Yeah. That sometimes you have to limit like the input that other people can have it's true in something so special and something so precious right so there's like two sides to that like being proud of something and wanting to show it off and enjoy it publicly Mm -hmm. but then also this notion of of protecting it yeah right because you don't want these external influences like getting in there and and, and the energy like to like 100 percent. and i think i think a lot of people like we are so we're so socially conditioned we're like oh if they're not posting anymore or they're not posting about them they've broken up yeah. or maybe there's a riff in their relationship right and like um, this the simple fact of the matter is like you can do this easy comparison just looking at your timeline like girls will get hundreds of likes on pictures that they post by themselves yeah but the moment the girl posts a picture with a guy like no one showed you love on yeah our, we no, recently like, posted a picture <laughs> and i got way more likes and then like all the guys who probably like thought SDH was beautiful, none of them showed her love because they're salty now. But, but it's okay. But anyways, like even, but even that, like that's just something interesting to think about, right? And like you also have to check your motives, right? Like, am I posting this to get likes, yeah. or am I posting this because, yo, it's this true. was a special moment for us, and yeah. like I just want to put it out. There. It's true, and I think that there's an intimacy, be- like behind social media of things that don't need to be online of course and they need to like sometimes i will will literally be somewhere and like i'll tell her i'm like let's put our phones away and let's just enjoy this moment yeah. like when we like you know when we went to uh go record your your video for your poem like i said let's take five minutes just close your eyes and just listen to like the nature around like arendelle park right now and just enjoy it yeah and like those moments are so much better sometimes than like oh let's take a picture let's capture this moment yeah. right which it, it's cool like we have memories right when we do those things but at the same time too 
we forget to enjoy them because we're so caught up with like i want to show this lady and like presenting the image of your relationship it's so true like you want people to believe that you have instead of the relationship you actually have like how many people post things on instagram all the time fake a smile but then yeah Yeah. and then the life that you're living behind the filter and behind the screen is something totally different it's so true yeah so like just for those people who are in dating relationships just like to be able to distinguish between like your priorities and like knowing whether or not that's of importance to you but one thing i do want to um make note of um just a way as to kind of pull all of this together and especially today as (laughs) and especially today as it's valentine's day is you're gonna see bear people post so many pictures and they're gonna show them with roses and things like that and to be honest as a single person i used to be like man i'm just salty because you know these people are just so big they're posting and they're showing it off yeah so i want to just be clear and say i think that we don't celebrate healthy relationships not that i'm saying that a post that makes makes it say that you're out having a healthy relationship but we don't celebrate healthy relationships because we're so salty inwardly about what we're feeling and where we're at in our life that like i think that we should celebrate those people so yeah maybe they're gonna post 20 pictures on their main page and maybe that's not aesthetically pleasing and maybe that's annoying but one you can unfollow them if you're that bothered by it and two like um we talk about this all the time like if you're not following something that's adding value to you then you can always unfollow them too um but at the same time too like we need to we need to celebrate people who are actually happy about their lives and if that's what they like to do that's what they like to do right um but uh so in pulling all of that together whether you are single today or whether you are in a relationship let's celebrate the people who are in a relationship but also for those in relationships let's not make people feel like third wheels and like you know actually continue to you know uh spend time with the people who are our friends and you know make sure that they still feel loved and um support each other from that perspective if you're in a relationship mentor someone you know who who wants to get there right look at who you want to emulate when you're single and go meet them and go talk to them right because i feel like part of our relationship is not just inwardly for us but it's outwardly to like inspire and motivate people because if we just kept that all for us how could we pass those healthy like you know um what's the word finish this because you always help me give 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 a better word like healthy like strategies and healthy like you know tactics to people who need that wisdom right of course so um right now we're just gonna get into the question segment of all the questions that you guys sent in to us thank you guys again um so the first thing that was brought up was this idea of healing and moving on and i'm gonna just steal the spotlight because matt does this all the time on my channel so um the link will be below yeah and i've posted a video about like 10 ways to heal and deal with a breakup um but yeah some of the things that like we covered in that is just being patient and gentle with yourself and recognizing that the amount of time it takes me to fully heal which even that term fully is is a bit like loaded because what total healing looks like for me is going to be different from what it looks like for you, right? And the time it takes me to get over a breakup compared to the time that it takes you, it depends on a lot of different factors, right? Like how long was the last relationship? Yeah. Did we see each other every day? Are we still in the same like mutual friend circles and other social settings together? Mm-hmm. Like all of those things sort of play a role. Yeah. And like on this idea of being gentle with yourself also like healing is not a linear process it's not and i think that's something we sort of like are hard on ourselves about because like we'll hear a certain song or smell a certain scent or or go to popeyes in matt's case and then get and then get triggered right and so like just being gentle with yourself and those triggers right because experiencing heartbreak is a loss yeah it's right true. like and and i think we we often downplay that and we we like understate the type of severity it's true and the trauma and and, and the grief that's associated yeah. with heartbreak like right? simply just going like each step of the process doing little things like whether it's throwing out that teddy bear that they gave you yeah. or that card um or deleting pictures, pictures. off your phone like yeah. i remember there was one time that you like that's you know, the biggest one, yeah I think. like i think you had deleted like a lot and then you didn't realize because you had not gone deep in your yeah. archives and then you saw some stuff and then like it affected you that day and i think it's important too like i don't want to um 
like a step ahead of us but when you're in a relationship with someone understanding that even when someone has a period of healing and moving on that even in your relationship giving them the chance to still heal from stuff yeah and not getting like super threatened like oh oh they're thinking of that person yeah or, oh, they and that they don't love you yeah. but you yeah. know what like i thought of this today and i missed that dynamic that we used to have or not or, even it might not even be something like i missed that yeah but like thinking of that past hurt yeah you know what i mean like it could be something that triggers me to feel or you or anyone to feel like oh and this person lied to me yeah and like for that day maybe an insecurity is playing in your mind and it compounds thinking yeah. of that thing yeah right and so it could be something as simple as that as well yeah it's true and like giving that person that space to do that like i had to realize like at first like i'm the kind of guy who wants to like solve everything and like make sure everything's good right whereas sdh in that moment needs me to just allow her to feel what she's feeling but still be supportive and not like just dip and be like let me know when you're good yeah. right um and like i seen this thing on instagram once where like this boyfriend's like me and my girlfriend have a code word where like if i say are you be are you are you feeling like a sad lobster today and she's just like yeah but he knows that means like she just needs i don't know how time. you could ever equate lobsters <laughs> with to being sad because they're Holy. like so yo good, shout out but... to sherry and hayatelli if you want real lobster cater to her we're gonna drop in her instagram bio yeah. right now um but no it's true like you just need to be able to give that person yeah. the time because like and you so said like healing even, is not linear so like even that point that you just said like not even for the people that are just in relationships, but even in terms of being a good friend yeah. to people or a good family member to it's people true. you know experiencing breakups yeah. during this time of year, yeah. be gentle. Like, like, oh, you need to get over yeah, it. And you it's need like, to, you need to be gentle. And I mean, like we're both guilty of telling people yeah. just get over it. Yeah, it's but true. it's something we also have to learn to be more cognizant of, like that mm -hmm. need to be gentle. Yeah. Like these these matters of the heart yeah. are extremely uh, deep and personal yeah. and so just being gentle yeah and can we be real like someone can say like the most fire line to you to your situation yeah. you can do the most fun thing that you want to do and still feel miserable yeah. that day so yeah. give yourself time to heal right a wound takes time to heal you also need time to heal and then yourself. even once the wound has healed you're still left with a scar so it reminds right? you, right and yeah. there's still a, sometimes a visible reminder of what what that wound was right yeah it's true um but i think um that's super important um because when we're learning to be gentle with ourselves that other phase of that singleness comes in and, and it is important because then you learn that you need to love yourself so i i think um i've heard this all the time like if you um are like whole in yourself and you're 100 percent with your with yourself then it's not to say that losing someone won't hurt but your identity and who you are and all of those things aren't based off of that person, yeah, right? Exactly. Like no one's going to downplay what you're feeling, but like you need to refine what makes you happy again mm -hmm. and what makes you tick, right? Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, like when someone leaves you, like you're sometimes all you got, right? So you have to make sure that you love yourself first too, right? Um, but I think in that season of healing and moving on, um, it's super important to like keep your guard up and not just want to fall you know back into a relationship like a or or a rebound type thing right and and i think that's a phase where you can intake from your previous relationship and say okay what did i like from that relationship and what are some things that were toxic or i yeah. didn't like right and that is a process of like you know having standards right and setting those standards not super high per se but writing on a piece of paper like this is what i want in a person yeah. this is what I want to be comfortable with and I'm not comfortable with, right? So yeah. talk a bit about that. Um, and so like, I, I think I actually am pretty proud of the title I came up with for this point, yeah. but having standards versus suffocating opportunities, Oof. Oof. right? And I think sometimes like, and I can speak to this as a woman and I can speak to this on behalf of a lot of single women that I know is that sometimes we, under the guise of having standards, shut people out because of our fears and deep-rooted insecurity Facts. right so in in attempts to protect ourselves because we've been hurt before we like put on this facade that we have all of these standards that are in order to like keep our self-worth and preserve that self-worth but in actuality a lot of the times they're just because we're scared yeah right um that's not to say 
that you shouldn't have standards because obviously you should have standards. And as you said, it comes as a result of loving yourself that you put in place these standards. But you need to be able to sort of distinguish between non-negotiables and wishes. So um, the, the difference there is like, between your strong convictions and then selfish desires it's true right so like for example like the easiest one i could give you is like this time around in dating i wanted to be with someone that shared my faith Mm. right and that was at a similar point in their walk with christ Mm. and for me that was a hard and fast non-negotiable yeah right um something that might have been a wish or a selfish desire was that i wanted someone tall and wow. I ended up with nine. Wow. So, I mean, five, nine isn't really considered. Still taller than Isn't you. really, not when I wear heels, but it's okay. I'm willing to give up the heels for. Wow. Here, so. oh, okay. Anyways, but five, nine isn't really tall. But that is a self. <laughs> she said that like five times. That is a wish, right? Yeah. It's not a non negotiable. For- I mean, I mean yeah a non-negotiable yeah. for me or like a strong conviction yeah it was just sort of like a preferential kind of yeah. like whatever right so i think it's important to distinguish between those two because yeah. sometimes if you have this list of everything you want in a person and you're not willing to deviate from that or mm. you're not willing to explore other possibilities then you close yourself off from a world yeah of amazing people that you dismiss based on physical appearance that you dismiss because they don't have a certain job that you want your prospective person to have even though you might not have that job yourself right like so all of these different um sort of qualifiers that we put on a person that might disqualify potentially great candidates get it candidates We're, we're really punny we love puns um no nah, but it, it's so true like i think people pass up on, on good guys and good girls because you know they're kind of focusing on the superficial right yeah and like you laughed at me about the height thing but i know a lot of women like a lot of women that pass up on guys just because they're a little bit short yeah like what if their heart makes up for the difference uh, uh, <laughs> um so uh it's, it's 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 really true right and i think um as a as a segue into that is um once you've set those standards and once you've like kind of um wrote down what you want in a, in a person right um it's understanding that even while you set those that it doesn't necessarily mean that once you find that you know someone who meets a few of those things or meets like most of them that you necessarily go back into a relationship right and i think it's so pro- important that we talk about this next theme which is waiting versus settling right Right. because like just because someone checks off three or your boxes doesn't mean that that's the person that you ought to be with right because i think me personally like i had a list i showed you that i wrote when i was like 15 years old except the height one (laughs) but but i i wrote i wrote a list of both physical characteristics like emotional characteristics Mm. um all sorts of different characteristics that I wanted and qualities that I wanted in my perspective, dude, right? Um, And like over the years from writing that list to now, like I would go through that list and revisit that list and Mm. I'd be like, okay, he checks off like seven out of the 20 things. Yeah. That's great, right? (laughs) That's like what, seven times five. That's like 35% of my list, right? But you don't need to settle for that yeah. seven things on the list, right? Yeah. Because there's there's a pretty good chance that the person that meets more than yeah. what's on your list is out there. It's so true. And we were having this conversation in the car today where like in that four years of being single, like, you know, I may have liked certain people or like maybe an opportunity would have presented itself. And like, I think about it now and I'm like, thank God, like no knock to those people, but they weren't. <laughs> the right people for me and i was more so in my feels lonely um maybe found three out of you know the 15 that i needed in a person right um and really like when i thought that like at that point where i was like praying to god i'm just like yeah it's not gonna happen a week later i met shannon so the right person is gonna come along like don't take that time as something that's like you know you need to um you know, do something crazy to expedite the process, like the right person's going to come. And to be honest, like the way our story worked out, we're not trying to say that it's going to work out the same way for you, right? It might work out where like you intentionally pursued someone and then that happened, right? It might work out where like you were filling up gas at a gas station and someone dropped their keys on the floor and boom, like it's so subjective to how that works for you. Um, 
But I think that's the very cool thing about it is so a lot of times it's just natural, right? Like yeah. it happens in the moment or, you know, it, and I think that's what was a con, like a confirmation for us is that the whole process of us coming together was not forced. It was so natural. It was so like, like we were so that's at ease to, with the process. That's not to say though that it was always easy. No, no, Which no. I think, yeah. I think people might sometimes confuse that like if, if there are hardships that you mm. automatically need to dismiss or it. that's a red flag right? or this. Or that, yeah. yeah. And it's important to be able to distinguish between those as well. Yeah. Because just because something is hard doesn't mean it's not worth it. Yeah. Or that it's not worth pursuing. Yeah. Um, and and to talk about that, um, shout out to um, Pastor Mike Todd from Transformation Church. Um, he's so dope. We'll drop him in the, yeah, in check the description. Out the yeah. Goals. Even if you're, even if you're not, someone who listens to sermons or pastors or is Christian, there's such wisdom in that. And that's one thing that I respect about him as a pastor is he doesn't just like be like, open your Bible, you're a sinner. But he, <laughs> he basically says like, these are tools that as a church, as Christians, that like, if we're not getting it from the church, then we're getting it from somewhere else. Right. And it might be bad advice. Right. So we need to re reclaim that space and, and, and talk about those things about healthy relationships. But one thing that he talks about, especially in this one about waiting, um, is having a goal versus aiming, you know, uh, aimlessly. Right. And, um, that is so crucial because we're not judging people for why you're getting into relationships, but I think it would be fair to say for us that like we've been in multiple relationships. We're at a certain point in our life right now where we're not trying to waste time. If you don't waste time trying to just randomly to apply to a, a degree, then why would you do that with your relationship? You or, know what I mean? or a job. Or a job, right? right? So like you get into a degree because the ultimate goal is you want to learn and gain knowledge and yeah, maybe have some fun in that. But at the same time, the end goal is you want to get a job. Right. And to get a job, you want to do the same thing applying things, for right? a job, right? Like you want to make sure it has the record. I mean, facts. it has the stuff you're looking for in a yeah. job, yeah. right? Um, maybe it gives you weekends off. Mm. It does this, blah, 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 blah. Right. So all of those things are important. And I think the analogy that he provides in that uh, sermon is is very, 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 <laughs> very, very illustrative of yeah. this idea and he sort of talks about like an archer so mm. y'all know Katniss like that sort of <laughs> that sort of imagery and that if you have your bow and arrow and you're just shooting all over the place not knowing where your target is what your target is how far your target is you're going to be exerting a lot of energy yeah a lot of resources Right, because how many people know it's not cheap to date? It's true. It's not Facts. right. Um, and thank God she's not a Pandora girl. And yeah. like, and like you're you're exerting all of this emotional energy, all of this physical energy, driving back and forth. It's true, right? Like all of these different kinds of things, and in the process, you're wearing yourself down, but you're also like potentially hurting someone. Yeah. Right. Shooting. Like it's like almost like shooting like with a blindfold, mm. right? And if you're if you think of that imagery, that's very reckless. Yeah. And and there's no way to predict where that arrow is going to go and yeah. how immensely or how little it's gonna hurt someone. Yeah, it's right? true. And I think a lot of the times when we think about hurt in relationships, we think about ourselves and we're like, Whoa is me, like is this person cheated on me, this blah 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 yeah. blah 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 blah. But we fail to recognize our roles in those failed relationships yeah and like that's something i personally had to learn like in this period of before you was that i actually had a big part in hurting some people mm. right and and that was part of my own growth recognizing that i wasn't the only person that was hurt and i'm not the only person that can play victim yeah same because here. Yeah. i might have led people on i might have like whatever the case may be and recognizing that i've hurt people stops that cycle of hurt yeah yeah. Right. Because you recognize that you're an active proponent in the relationships that mm, you spit you try that to, butter. You try to foster. Oof. Yo, honestly, like I'm just like sorry to interrupt, but like, you know, people might just be attracted to like the physical or like whatever, but like her mind is like one of the most attractive parts of her. So when she spits like all these words, I'm just like Yep. Okay. Keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um I I kinda wanted to like I was getting at the point about um and you talked about you know having a goal and not aiming aimlessly and like i think we both came to a point where we're just like our end goal in relationship with someone is marriage right yeah. that's what we want to strive for yeah. so 
obviously we're not gonna be like those crazy like christian people who are like oh we're like, first date wow you have romans 8 28 in it. your bible let's get married tomorrow <laughs> yeah. no um but like there's things that we can do in this season however that is until like a marriage that we can prepare ourselves for right. and not waste that season yeah. like if you can't tell in this season or in the four years you're dating someone like by then that you're not able to marry yeah. them then what purpose is it serving and it's not to say that you know some people can't have a long engagement some people you know some people get married in six weeks of being each other some people get married in six years or six months whatever that timing is for you but like you're gonna have to determine like like you said am i wasting time or am i investing into something yeah. that i know is going to yeah. be an end and goal? mike todd sort of speaks on that as well yeah. with his train example yeah, yeah. so is like that- a vehicle to get you to a destination yeah. right dating is not that destination yeah. right it's meant to get you to or usher you into marriage and commitment mm. long term like, yeah like that right and so if somebody is like stringing you along for years and years and years yep. and years and years with no end in sight with no final destination in sight yeah then you have to like reconsider like yeah what the goal is it's right? true and i think it's important like to to recognize like is this someone that you can presently build with Mm -hmm. or is this someone who like you're just dating their potential and the reason we say that is like a marriage isn't just like oh i'm in love with you and this and feelings and all that kind of stuff like real talk like it's someone who like when i'm overwhelmed and i'm stressed they're not going to get flustered too and then we're both going to spiral out of control or you know someone who even if they might not be the most educated but they know that if you know we have a kid in the future that that person's going to take two jobs and they're going to work hard right it's it's characteristics and and things that you can see in a person now that can translate to any situation that you go I think, through i think that's very important because a lot of the times we think that the person that we want to be with or that we're considering being with has to have it all together yeah and there is a difference between building with the person mm-hmm. building the person wow and building up that person Jeez, just take over my podcast right so so for example in our case like we're we're both trying to like establish our careers and whatever yeah. and whatever but i don't have to build you yeah you are already established in your passion and in your purpose so that i can walk alongside you building you up mm. right but in that way we can build together it's true right yeah. but i'm not spending my time trying to develop matt and build matt yeah right so and i think that is something important that people have to understand is that you don't need to have it all together but the person that you are trying to date or trying to get to know needs to like show these qualities and show the ambition and show the motivation and the dedication and and the work ethic yeah and those kinds of things um that's not to say that i'm saying you should date someone that doesn't have a job because you sort of need a job yeah to like to like to like be able to foster a relationship right yeah yeah and i i think too like don't make your relationship everything like in the sense and and when i say that i mean like you can't be my girlfriend and then also like my mentor my teacher this 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 Mm. like you can go to other people externally so that they can help you as an individual of course and like you know not alienate people from your life and be like i don't need to hear from anyone only need to hear from my person like i'll tell her sometimes i'm like even if like you know, maybe she's upset at me for something. I'm like, go talk to like your girls and have a conversation with them because maybe we're not communicating right right now. So get their opinion and maybe, you know, they'll be able to, to give you some wisdom on what's going on right now. Like I can't be everything for her. Um, and that's just practical. Right? And I think I think Will Smith talks about that idea, too, and that you can't expect your person to be your happiness. Mm. You need to find that within yourself and yeah. you need to foster the things that make you happy and, yeah. and, and find your purpose and be alive and on fire in and of yourself right? yeah yeah because it, because and i think that's why they why people take it so hard and harshly when people leave yeah, yeah. right is because they invest and they pour everything they are into that relationship and then so when it leaves yeah a huge part of who they are goes with it yeah it's true and just to kind of wrap up this point um there are things that you can learn about people very early on not to say that people can't change or that they can't work on certain things, but like, I remember like one time, like we did like a 30 questions type thing, which those are good, but like I needed to see her it's actually 20 questions or oh, 20 questions. My bad. <laughs> um, but there was things that I need to see her do in person. Like I wanted to see how she reacted to other people in a social setting. Right. I needed to see how 
when something bad happened in her life, how she reacted. Not that I'm saying that she has to have it all together, but like there are characteristics about her that like it doesn't matter what we go through. I know she's going to be good and I know she has my back. Right. And that's the cool thing is like I don't need someone who's have who's had every experience, but I appreciate you because I know no matter the experience we go through that we're going to be good. Right. And, and she has that template and that set of characteristics that I know we can establish a future in. Right. So I think to, to, to sum that up, are you really in it for commitment or are you in it for convenience? Yo, and let me just say, like, this is to all the ladies watching this today on this Valentine's Day. Let me just tell you, you don't need to settle for a man who is going to leave you on red. Okay, well, I mean, this is transferable to the guys too, but like I'm speaking from being a woman, like you don't need to settle for a guy that's going to leave you on red, not message you for three days and then come back Facts. and message you at 2.30 a.m. Hey, what you doing? Like <laughs> you don't need to settle for someone like that. You deserve somebody that's willing to commit to you, someone that's willing to prioritize you, that wants to prioritize mm. you, right? Yeah. Because let me just say, and I'm not trying to get super senti, but you deserve someone who recognizes your worth, right? Mm. Because you are worth far more than anyone could ever be able yeah. to quantify. It's true. Right? And so speaking from my perspective of like being with guys who wouldn't even like reach out on my birthday, like, yeah, that that's, wow. that's true. That like didn't even send me a birthday card, okay? Wow. In a long distance relationship. Wow. So from being being with that to being with you, and like this guy literally we did this job the other day and um he was like back and forth to the car getting the stuff putting it in getting the stuff putting it in because he didn't want me to go outside in the rain because he knew that my hair explodes and like turns super frizzy and curly and Which so I he wanted don't. to protect protect my hair to that extent like that level of commitment not just to our relationship but also to me yeah as a person like to to knowing the things that make me tick to knowing how to take care of me and how to love me like you deserve that type yeah of commitment. and and i've talked about this before sacrifice is one of the greatest forms of love and um i mean for us as christians jesus did that by dying on the cross for us and it's, and it's true. not even in just the big things right no. sacrifices and the little things like you always say like when there's something you could be doing yourself but you put that aside and it may mean you need to work a little harder the next mm. day but in order to be there yeah like I think, I think sometimes we think sacrifice has to be this big, huge like. No, it's true. Not, but it's like, and 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 when I say someone to build with, like I do public speaking, and if you guys have heard my annihilating anxiety talk, thank this woman right here because she practically helped me write the entire thing, and I was actually having anxiety writing that talk. Can you, can you go figure, right? Um, but she literally like helped me like not spiral, catch myself, bring it back, and be like, okay, let's get these points out, and then we wrote them out together, right? the big things and then it's the small things like when we were sitting in the car once and i gave her like the box of fries and i said here you pick your first fry and then she picked the fry and then she gave it to me first and i'm like oh that's so cute but like little things like that and you know what those little things are important just as the big things because if they can do that small on that little level then i could be like yeah then they're gonna do it on the bigger level because those things are just as important so i think now that we covered this idea of waiting and settling and what sort of happens in both of those um the emphasis moves from finding the right person to being the right person <laughs> yeah it's true and um i think part of that is like when we inventory like our past relationships is like unlearning toxic behaviors and, and patterns and tendencies together like one thing that um i think was super important for me to realize early on is that like i have a tendency like when i've wronged someone especially in a relationship my tendency is to spiral and go you know what yeah you're right i'm the worst boyfriend ever or like you know what i'm just not worthy of love like you know this 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 and just like you know try to throw in the towel or put it on me like you know i'm this horrible person but then that's when like sdh like literally told me one day she's just like bro like it's not helpful when like you start Kind of like spiraling to the point where you're putting all the blame on you like how am i how am i going to be able to tell you something without worrying about you you know freaking out yeah. right and me telling you something about you is not a knock to your character it's just telling you how like in this moment i didn't appreciate the way you acted mm -hmm. right and and me is because i'm so insecure about like 
trying to hold the relationship together and all that I do. And when I mess up, I'm like, ah, oh, they're going to leave me. Right. But me projecting my fear and insecurity on her um, doesn't accomplish anything in that. And moment. I think sometimes like you have to recognize that those co- conversations are uncomfortable. Yeah. Right. And so it's, it's funny that it worked out that way. But his insecurity is people leaving. And one of my toxic traits is that the moment something gets the slightest bit hard or difficult or weird, I'm like, I abandoning ship. Yeah. Right. And so that has sort of been something that I've had to learn to walk through and and talk through as well is that whenever we have a disagreement, it doesn't necessarily mean that that is the end. Yeah. Right. And that something can be difficult, but not catastrophic. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I think, I think learning that with you has been, has been a healthy thing. Yeah. Because in past relationships, people just have these toxic behaviors and just let them run rampant. Yeah. And let them run loose, right? It's true. But we sort of like when we acknowledge that the other person is whatever, like having that, we sort of yeah. talk it through. Yeah. And I remember you sending me an article once and it was talking about setting up healthy boundaries in relationships is taking that personal inventory and be like, okay, I can kind of get nasty like this when I'm pushed into a corner yeah. um, or I can tend to do this in a fight. Right. Um, and we literally said three things about each other that like we realize and recognize how we react in a fight or an argument. Um that we need to be conscious of that and not try to have those things surface up during the fight because it gets away from the actual I issue. I think I need yeah. to correct you there, though, because you you keep saying fight. <laughs> and this is something that I actually brought up to you yeah. like a little while ago. And I said, you know, this is super weird. Like, we've been talking for all of this time and we haven't actually fought. Yeah, that's true. And like, it, it, it like behooved me because I was like, what the heck? Like, we we don't fight. Yeah. Like, we may disagree and agree to disagree and like, be at odds in that way but we don't fight it's true um yeah. and i think our culture has sort of like ingrained this idea in us that passion is equated mm. to chaos and dysfunction and, facts yeah and and that type of excitement that comes with that right but that's a perverse way of it's true. of fighting right yeah. and in order to fight right you sort of need to dismantle and dislodge those mm-hmm. ideas of yeah of like of like love being equated to that type of like fiery yeah passion yeah like you don't need to swear or you don't need to like lash out or raise your voice to be in an argument of course. right communication yeah. can get yeah a little heated but it doesn't have to tear down someone's personality and their character in the moment while you're doing that yeah. right and i think that's all that stems all the way from when we're kids like it's not that just in relationships like when we're kids like our, our parents say something then we'll just go for low blows sometimes too so it's even learning in our socialization and growing up those things too um but it's it's really true and i remember you were telling me in terms of like you know being used to a certain level of toxicity yeah. or even toxicity in yeah. ourselves right you were telling me once you're like or you were tell them about the story when you talk to manuela remember when you're like i'm not used to like someone who doesn't fight with yeah. me yeah yeah and i think i think that's important to recognize as well and like in your own growth and maturity is that sometimes we become comfortable with the chaos mm. and like we sort of dwell in the dysfunction yeah and that when we do that like we sort of begin to think that our own relationship might be boring and i will admit like in the early stages of us developing this like i thought you were boring but not necessarily because he was boring but because i was used to a level of dysfunction like misguided misinterpreted toxicity as passion Mm. right and sort of like unlearning and relearning what it means to fight right Mm. so to speak yeah. Right. And recognizing that if I'm trying to address something with you, it's not because I'm attacking you, but I'm trying to like work towards a common goal. Okay. Right. Which might be reconciliation, which yeah. might be forgiveness, which might be peace and unity amongst us. Yeah. Right. In in order to get to that common goal. Yeah, it's true. So next question is, why are you so beautiful? Like, why are you the most beautiful amazing woman that's, that I've not on the list. that's true no but you know uh, as a way to segue into that i think part of um being the right person is learning if you guys have heard about that book called love languages um, by gary chapman yeah. check it out one the, the those are not the only love languages i think it's i don't think it's an, you of know course, a list. it's not a exhaustive it's list. true but i think that it's important that we can kind of i think it is a good start yeah we can though. gauge where we're at right yeah. um but it's not important to just know how you need love, but how your other person needs love, for your partner needs love, right? And like, I think um, I had to unlearn 
previous relationships, how those people um, expressed and communicated love and not apply them and superimpose them on this one, mm-hmm. right? Um, because um, I was in past relationships where that person was, uh, their love language was gifts. So they felt love. Actually, I was in a lot. I of am them. the gift. You are the facts. <laughs> nah, but like I was in a lot of relationships where those girls felt love when I bought them stuff. And you know what, Pandora? Like I feel like you guys should give me some money back for all the money I wasted with you. No, but it's true because um, that was the way they communicated it. But it wasn't the way that I communicated and received love. And we're not saying that you have to have the same love languages. But, but that's part of the fun of it yeah. as well is learning the way that your partner yeah experiences love that's true right so like and then also developing that for yourself yeah so like for sdh like we had a conversation like what what, what's your love language right and for me we both had um words of affirmation and quality time but she added one thing she's like if if this could be a love language is attention to small details right um but i needed to realize that because in the early stages i would try to buy her things and be like oh like i just want to make her feel and it wasn't it wasn't like just to like clarify it wasn't that i didn't appreciate those things because i did and i was really grateful for those gestures but it was like the simple things and the simple details that he paid attention to in conversation and and remembering small details that i thought were insignificant like those sorts of things like reassured me that you loved me Mm -hmm. right and like taking the time to tell me like before an exam that i was gonna do a an amazing job and 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 those kinds of things are even before a a work job where you'd wake up early to talk to me and just like boost me that i was going to kill it and make that client look super amazing that day like those little moments of affirmation for me really edify yeah me right and can i clarify like i don't just say those things because i think it's the the right boyfriend type of thing to do like i i genuinely like love seeing you unapologetically be you and like i just want to see you become the best version of you over the years so like getting to encourage you it's kind of a bit selfish because it's not just for your own growth but like i get to see like a new sdh every single day when she does these different things like first i met her she did makeup and hair and then now she's doing like no it's true and then she does (laughs) diy like onesies and now she's doing things like i I don't i'm not just proud of her just because of the things she does but just even how she grows in her personality and her character and the way she tackles things okay so aren't you supposed to say about how well i love you like come on of course yeah it's Get true to it. yeah <laughs> no but it's true yeah she 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 loves me deeply and okay so what's your love language quality time and, and words of affirmation and like there was this one time that like I, I came back from from cuba and like legitimately like like i, I probably was i wanted to cry but like i was at her house and i didn't want to embarrass myself in front of her parents but like she wrote me this card and like we both love captain america and marvel yo get you a woman who will watch the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe while for you, you're in Cuba? While you're in Cuba, so she can get caught up, so that you guys can watch like Infinity and Endgame together. She's a real one. Um, to sacrifice, what was it, three thousand minutes for me? So <laughs> I love you, three thousand. Uh, but no, it's true. And um, she wrote me this card, and like I'm with I, you to the end of uh, the line. <laughs> but I was really heavily doubting myself, especially doubting myself as a as like you know, like man, like because of my insecurities i'm like do i am i a good boyfriend to you or this is that and i was just having my own mood Wait, pause. You have something on your oh. i was just in my own mood um and she wrote me this card and like it's the cutest card i've ever got but like she's not just writing cheesy things she writes things that build me up she says things that build me up and the one thing that i can say that i love the most about her and maybe i'm skipping into a rapid fire question but it's naturally happening now is she shows me more so than she says she does more so than she says and that to me is not vain words it's like she shows me when she sacrifices and does things for me you know she shows me when like in a moment of like um i'm stressing out and like i'm at work and i'm like you know in the washroom i'm like i need you she drops everything and she's like you know what even if i'm at school right now i'm gonna leave my class right now i'm gonna message you and be like boom right because i know you're having a day and, and you need my help right so she sacrifices for me and that's what i love so much about her i think something important to also like recognize as well is like you've probably seen that like post circulating about how relationships aren't 50 50 yeah and on some day some days you're gonna have to give out that 98 and your partner's gonna give two but i think you also have to recognize that that 
energy and that effort needs to be reciprocated. Hundred percent. Right? Yeah. So that it's not every single day I'm having a horrible day and I'm not putting in anything and you're putting in everything. Yeah. Right. It, there needs to be some level of balance. So yeah. Don't allow yourself to be with someone who's only gonna expect you to put in everything. A hundred percent. Yeah. Like. Because I think a lot of times when we go into relationships, like we give so much of ourselves and forget that like we still one we still need to self love ourselves in relationships but uh, someone who will love us but also allow us to like you know like so, i see that post before it's like you know um get find someone who lets you take a nap like when she's tired like as much as i want to talk to her be like go rest like you need some sleep right now even though we missed each other the whole day like find someone who lets you take a nap right <laughs> and it's true like you have yeah. to be able to sacrifice yourself and, and sacrifice for that person because you want them to be better and ultimately that's going to help your relationship right because i always say this if i'm not well rested if i'm not eating well if i'm not taking care of my own mental health how am i supposed to help you how am i of supposed course. to be the person that you need me to be of course. right and the person that you deserve it's true um and i think um uh, uh, another part of that is learning to 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 find someone who's going to not just love you you know where maybe they see you guys but loving you where you're at mm -hmm. right but at the same time they cause you to grow yeah it's right true. so they call you to a higher standard they call out the purpose and the passions they see in you that mm -hmm. you may have on your own left dormant like yeah. they encourage you to try new things and and, and to true. develop things that they see in you that you might not yeah or you might overlook yeah. for example like when i like i write poetry and you encouraged me to make a spoken word out of one of them and yeah and like for me like for someone else to call that out in me that was the push i needed yeah right for someone to validate that and come alongside me and and believe in that to the point to see it through to completion like that that pushing even though it, it was scary was something that grew me yeah right well if we're gonna take time to on like we just keep honoring each other back and forth but that's another thing too <laughs> if i can say a side note is learn how to honor your person right and, and i'm not just saying like in a public setting but even towards each other um but i think sometimes we get so caught up with like the 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 typical relationship things and the relational aspects that we don't forget to like congratulate and thank our person for being who they are to us right because 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 sometimes we do it and it's just so second nature and it's just so natural that like if we like to get honored for our grades and we like to get honored for rewards, like I want to honor you because you did, you, you were a great girlfriend to me always, but like you were really good to me today. My tummy is growing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it's true. Like, and if any of you guys seen like my, um, my uh, birthday, uh, I didn't know that I had DIY skills because I thought I was just lame at crafts, but she encouraged me. And, and one of the biggest things that I can say to honor her is I did not want to get back into podcasting anytime soon. But she encouraged me. She's like, you know, remember why you started. And we were reading in the book today. And, and I had to, you know, she had to remind me, like, this show impacts people. And, like, you can do this. And Whether it's one or ten or a hundred or a thousand. And get you a woman who she sacrificed. If, you're, if you guys are Christian and you go to church, she sacrificed her Sunday nap to record this podcast with me. So and that means a lot. That's how you, like that, my she Sunday loves her nap. So, like, in terms of like finding someone who's gonna you know build you up she's building me up right now because she's like i'm gonna help you and i'll be i'm gonna be honest with you guys i'm gonna be real with you guys the first time we recorded this intro like it took me like five times because i just was like i don't know how to do this anymore like i'm scared like and she just literally said all right take it easy think about what you're gonna say and then go right so when i talk about someone who's gonna build you like i have the prime example of a woman right here so um what we want to kind of talk about next is um the you know knowing that you're with the right person and kind of those signs of you know um that that person's going to be able to build with you and we were kind of talking about this with your dad a little earlier and we were talking about how like how you know if someone's the one yeah. and he was kind of saying that like this idea about like you might like some things about someone early on but it's a gradual process of yeah. getting to learn like, can I still be with this person, yeah. right? And we're not saying call it quits or throw in the towel when you guys have an argument, but I think that there's some things that you just can't uncover until like time passes, mm. right? And, you know, six months go on and one year goes on, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, but it's um, important because when you're with someone, um, you won't just be able to confirm that inwardly, but like pay attention to like what people 
around you are are saying, are saying right yeah it's true and because like, i think i think people who are watching your relationship blossom and your friendship blossom and 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 flourish like they should be able to call out qualities in it that are good too yeah. right it shouldn't just be good to you to behind closed doors yeah. right and if if and that's not to say people aren't going to speak ill of your relationship but if the majority of people that you trust and you allow to speak into your life are telling you that that's not a good relationship for you, then chances are they're right. Yeah. Right. If these are good, sound people you go to for advice and for them to like pour into you and they're telling you, no, honey, that's a toxic one or yeah, no, that shorty isn't gonna, <laughs> isn't gonna get you where you need to be. Then maybe that's a, that's a tell, telltale sign that that person isn't the one for you. It's true. Right? Yeah. Um, that isn't to say that people aren't going to tell you that you shouldn't be with someone, right? Yeah. Because there might have been people that told you you're not supposed to be with me yeah. or that I'm not supposed to be with you. Wait, 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 did I say that? You're not supposed to be. Yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> right? And, and and there might be people that tell me like, oh, you could do so much better than Matt or, mm. or vice versa, right? But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not supposed to be. Right? Yeah, it's true. And, and I think it's important to be like, yeah, you know, realize that people might see exterior things and think that that person is not for you but they don't know who yeah. you are behind class closed doors they don't know who you are in moments of intersection in your life and and, and you know stress and trauma mm -hmm. they don't know so at the end of the day take inventory what people are saying and take it in the people um, that you care about yeah right? yeah and and, 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 that, and that goes back to that thing about learning when to post and what to say of like course. like we kept you know um our relationship very close to the chest with people that we trusted yeah. right and it wasn't like and we, mentors that we yeah respected and it wasn't well. like there was a certain day where we're like okay we're gonna post a picture on yeah. instagram we just waited till we felt it was the right time yeah. and it, it happened very naturally and yeah. then that sort of like leads to like the next part of it is that you need to surround yourself with people mm. that can pray for you that can encourage you that can lift yeah. you up relationally and who've walked that road before yeah. right you don't need to reinvent the relationship wheel because there are people who have done it who have gotten to where you want to get yeah. that you can learn from whether it be your parents if you're fortunate enough to have a good example of like a loving relationship in in your household or friends and family who do like look at looking at those examples will ultimately sort of shape the direction you and your partner go. yeah it's right? true and we've talked about this point that it takes a community to raise someone and like we have to realize that we don't have all those answers right we don't have all the answers to right relationship and we need to see people who've done it right and and emulate <laughs> shout out to josh shout out to josh's birthday, birthday speech to me emulate what you want right yeah. and 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 what is it what is that saying that the you are the closest five people to you yeah right so um if you are only seeing toxic relationships and you're only going to people for that the likelihood is that that might perpetuate in mm. your own relationship right so sometimes you might have to re remove yourself from sharing information from people or remove yourself from relationships with some people because they're adding a level of toxicity to your life that will show up in your relationship mm. yeah. right so if you sure. have friends that are so negative and being like oh well if he doesn't have this kind of salary and this 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 and blah 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 then you're gonna start judging me with those kind of, of characters i'm gonna start judging you with those kind of standards and, and but things, like at right? the same time you want to surround yourself with people that are not yes men and women mm. as well right you want people that call out and challenge the things that you might just accept as yeah. the way it is yeah. right and correction and you know people who challenge you to grow better it hurts it hurts from the sense of relationship but it also hurts when other people tell you that yeah. and one thing that i can say that i've learned or something that that shannon gave to me or oh, it's so weird when you call me shannon. i know i don't i don't call her at all but i usually just call her sdh or babe but like um like something that she really um helped me grow in is being able to take correction yeah. right and like at first she would say some things and i'm like why why is she getting on my case for something so little about that like there was this one time i was chewing and like i was chewing with my mouth open and like she's just like like 
why do you chew with your mouth open, right? But I, but like, on, and I on wasn't, the onset, I wasn't yeah. trying to like let me just say no, but like, I, I wasn't trying I was to. That, yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah. no. I wasn't. Try, <laughs> I wasn't trying to be like rude or anything. Yeah. Like it was just like an etiquette thing, yeah. right? And not even not even just that, but like something else. Like whenever Matt takes off his shoes, like he'll press down the the back part of his yeah. shoe, and like this guy wears nice leather shoes, mm-hmm. and then they're gonna have a crease in the back. Yeah, and so that was some like another example of like just telling you like listen. Yeah. Like you're gonna damage your shoes. You're gonna have to buy more shoes. Yeah. So just take the extra step to take off your shoe properly. And that's the thing. Like at that first onset, I might catch feels because I'm just like, oh, like, you know, why is she saying this? Something else again. (laughs) No, but it's not even like that. But it's like, like, she's trying to make me better, right? And and one thing that we um both strive to live for is excellence in the things that we do. Not perfection, but if we're gonna do something, do it right. And do it well. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 don't take shortcuts around what you need to do. Yeah. Right. So in your relationship, correction is needed, right? Mm-hmm. But also outside of your relationship, correction is needed as well. Right. So surround yourself with people who will be able to correct you in those things. Right. And and for those who are, you know, um people who are of faith, right? Also seek people who are in your faith who can give you that, um, not just you know just regular worldly wis- wisdom, but wisdom that's gonna be lined up with. Yeah, and pray for you. Yeah, like, like th- I think that's something that's so like, like undervalued. Yeah, but somebody that literally will invest time. Yeah, interceding and pr- praying on yeah. your behalf for your village. I don't just need your sympathy; I need your prayers. Yeah. I've seen that post before. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, right. yeah. All right, so um, we've reached that point of the episode where. We got through all of our topics and our questions. Um, guys, we wish we can go through like a four hour podcast with you, but we tried to compile everything and kind of summarize it as best as possible. But don't um, be afraid to continue the conversation with us in the comment section or DM us. Or if you have us on our personal social medias, don't feel you know scared to reach out to us because we don't just do these things for this show. Um, Oftentimes people will message us and be like, hey, I'm, I'm having an issue in my relationship. We're not qualified counselors per se, but we've gone through life. So feel free to reach out to us. But it's that time of that episode where you guys thought we weren't going to do a rapid fire. Come on. Of course, we're going to do it where we where we're going to do rapid fire. Um, but we're going to do a little bit of relationship rapid fire based on me and her. So we're going to answer the questions. So to start the question, uh, the rapid fire, uh, first question is. How have we chosen to honor God with this relationship? I think this wouldn't be an authentic, real community talks if we didn't talk about our faith and Mm -hmm. how that has sort of like steered and guided our relationship and how we've chosen to do relationship. Um, So I think one of the key things for us was recognizing how much we value purity in our relationship. And I think the, the church has sort of like, in this topic and in this world of in realm of dating has sort of like stressed it to be just virginity. Yeah. And like as long as you don't this, do yeah. the deed, yeah. then, then you're pure. But like something that we've been learning, um, is that it transcends that so much more. And yeah. like it, it, it sort of goes into your thoughts and yeah. the way you conduct yourself and mm. the way that you dress and the way that you speak and the things that you allow to fill your timeline yeah. are all sorts of things that can affect your ability to be pure and pursue godliness and holiness yeah. through relationships, right? So that has been something for us. And um, another thing is that we we try to pray together every night. Like sometimes, yeah. like Mandam be like sleepy and then we fall asleep. Yeah. But but one of the things that we try to do every single night is pray together before we eat at yeah. the restaurants. Even though people sometimes look at us like, "What the heck?" Yeah. Or even before this podcast. Or yeah. even yeah, and so that that is something like really powerful, I think, in in uniting in prayer. Like prayer in your own life is 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 potent and powerful, but like when you do it with someone else, um, I think I think that is another level of intimacy as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, right? and and um, I think this might kind of uh, shock some people. Um, but one of the things that we've committed to doing is actually uh, not kissing. And Oh, yeah, do the little insert, that little rewind noise and play it again. <laughs> okay. But, like, we literally have decided not to kiss each other yeah. until we get married. Yeah. And, like, it's not because we're trying to be pretentious, like, yeah. over-religious no. Christians or anything of the sort, but it's because we know ourselves. Yeah. And we know that sometimes when you engage in those kinds of things, it leads to other things. Yeah, yeah. And as a safeguard and in, in a way to honor myself and honor you, 
and respect your purity and respect my own like we've opted to do that yeah and tell them the cool story about that like how that came about oh yeah so like we it came to this idea about you know kissing and stuff i remember one day um i randomly went to her and i was like what would you think about like our relationship and us not kissing and i said i'm not trying to weird you out or anything i just i've i've seen some people do it and i thought that like doing it for the right reasons of like you know making sure that um you safeguard yourself and also just like to be able to like say that like your relationship wasn't just built on the physical yeah and and knowing that you know you know um i want to make it clear like it doesn't mean that because we don't kiss that we're not attracted to each other yeah. it's it, just something that we've just used as a safeguard over us um but i remember saying that to her and then she was like whoa that's freaky because you because know, that was always something that i wanted to do yeah. but like it's rare like really rare to find someone to find somebody yeah. that also shares that yeah. um desire yeah and i think that's important because if you're in a relationship where that person didn't want to kiss and you're in a and the other person wants to kiss yeah you have to be real with yourself yeah as well yeah and tensions that can be unhealthy and i think that's important with us because there's been a lot of points in our relationship where we've discussed things and we didn't even like talk about them before but we both at the same time had the same answer yeah and they just both lined and that confirmed like our spirit that that was the right thing that we needed to do um so yeah and And i think part of that as well is this idea of like seeking jesus together like in order to have those confirmations in your spirit like you can't have those unless you know jesus for yourself and unless you know jesus together yeah right yeah so i think that's that's probably my answer to that question yeah um next one so what do you love about the other person the most i kind of like caved and said this already i mean i barely like you wow (laughs) um no i think i think something that's really important for me and something that i really respect and admire and if you want to use the l word love about about matt is is his heart for other people um and i think that selflessness in a world that like constantly pushes like instant gratification constantly pushes me 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 and i like his heart for the we and for the us and for the community is something that really like edifies and enriches my own understandings of what it means to be human right um and and sort of the way that he redefines my understanding of what it means to be a good human being ah so cute um i i kind of told you guys a bit about this earlier in the podcast when i say that like she shows me more than um she just says you um, should just come up with a second one no i, I had three Are you in short supply? no 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 my girl like i have three um but the <laughs> <laughs> the other one um was that like literally she like um embodies the phrase making you know something out of nothing and the whether proverbs that's what? the proverbs 62 women because it's the proverbs 31 times so that's what i call it yeah that's our little thing um but literally like i read proverbs 31 and i'm just like okay this is sdh but like they forgot all of the other things sdh does too so um no it's true like whether that's like your talents and your giftings whether that's you know uh your art your makeup um one day she's like i'm gonna make my own slime because men's are not about to go waste money on amazon and buy slime like when this woman puts her mind to something it's not that she just gets it done but she gets it done with such excellence and i don't just love her because she does things amazingly but like she challenges herself and pushes herself to limits that like i'm like yo when we talk about building a life together with someone like i i don't worry i don't stress because literally and i don't want to be cheesy but there's nothing that this woman can't do like there's nothing impossible for her and she reaches limits <laughs> she reaches limits and there's no boundaries over her right and um i think that also speaks to the part about when you find someone who can build you and get you there too like that's what we do for each other right i'm not with someone who like makes me stay down at a certain level but literally being with her makes me a better man so that's why i love you because me alone is it's okay <laughs> me alone is i could go on you know it's all right but like me with you is like me with you and zabuma food I wasn't, I was okay fine sorry anyways, anyways yeah anyways, but, okay yeah nah but me me with me with sdh is the best version of man so yeah um oh the justin bieber song isn't me with you it's me and you i'm gonna tell you one time hey 
I'm going to tell you one more time. That's a different okay. song. Oh, is it? Okay, my bad. All right, let me just stop. Who is the cuter one? Um, Definitely. Her. I think if we mean physically, it's me. Yeah. Well, I'm 100%. Nah, I'm beat, I'm so I'm but if, if we're talking about like in terms of like 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 cute like cheesy type things i think it's you like the first time we ever went somewhere um alone like in the in the passenger side of the car like matt had all of my favorite snacks and then he was like oh like if you open the the thing there's like snacks so i opened it and there was like oreos and m&ms and fuzzy peaches and i was like wow and all vanilla chai all, frappe. yeah but she and didn't drink because she was so vanilla nervous vanilla chai frappe which is like one of my favorite drinks and like i was like shook because like that level of like attention to detail and care was really really thoughtful um mind you i just like called him like an elevated uber driver wow she literally <laughs> told me that the same day she's like wow this is an uber for but that like, service but it was really sweet yeah um nah but like she does so many cute things for me too um what is your idea of the perfect date um i think to be honest like as much as like people like to go on like these fancy dinners and excursions and whatever and whatever i literally think like just spending time like at my house creating or learning something new or doing something new yeah. together is is my perfect date yeah like for example um we did water marbled mugs yeah that it was literally so costed us like five dollars yeah and like it was such a fun activity like my parents were around and they were like laughing at whose mug was uglier which everyone on insta said mine was the ugliest Hers but like but like just that experience of troubleshooting something new mm. and like getting to explore something we both didn't know how to do was yeah. something i found really rewarding yeah yeah and, and, and like this one time like matt like bought all this like he like went shop happy at the dollar <laughs> store and bought all of these different materials for us to make christmas ornaments and like that was something really cool too yeah yeah and that's the thing like i think i just enjoy like doing everyday life yeah with sdh and just like having fun doing anything so it doesn't really matter where we go yeah like but it's just having experiences yeah. with you and i think i think that's something like as a common thing for both of us is that it doesn't need to cost a lot facts to you don't be, gotta break the bank yeah. to be significant it's true yeah yeah um who would play your partner in a movie dj khaled wow <laughs> you uh, say actually no i think you would play yourself in a movie because i think you have the ability to act and she and steals all the best and answers speak very wow. like eloquently and, so you're and, saying i'm fake i'm and, an actor and can <laughs> no and conduct yourself like accordingly and i think you would be the most authentic mm. version of you if we're talking about like is that a cop out i don't know Nah, but then I can't use that answer. I'm be like, Jesus would play the best version of you because she's the closest, most tangible version of Jesus that I see in my life. Um, but if I'm going to say an actor, um, Zendaya. Yeah. So Zendaya wow. would play because she has the curly hair like you. But I know, but you don't have the curly hair today. But anyways. Oh, also like, yo, men like take interest in like your women. Like I actually have fun when she's like, do you think I should wear this eye makeup? Or like, do you think I should do my hair this way? They're not like just to be honest they're not they don't really need your opinion but they want to involve you in their process so don't be like i don't care babe like whatever but like i, I think i didn't really care my, that much about makeup until i met her now to the point where like i'll look at girls and i'll be like their highlight <laughs> sucks like what brand did they use did they use the morphe thing or no okay um if you could put a song to your partner what would it be and i want us to say our song the same time but wait I, I i think i know what you're gonna say and i that's my answer too but i think if you know matt then his theme song and like if he was to walk into a room and like, they play a song it would be teenage fever <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that just how I... okay stop okay so anyways that one but okay ready three two one reckless, reckless love. love yes yes and um i think i think i choose that because this is the evidence that god recklessly loves me uh -huh. right because he has chosen to give me such a good and perfect gift in you and in this and so i think i think so yeah and i think that's a combination of all the things that we've gone through in our life yeah. where we're like god why did this have to happen and i'm like i would go through every single hurt and pain that i had to go through just to meet you again so 
um the most adorable thing the other person has done i already said my answer i just exist this is easy (laughs) for you um no uh the most adorable Hmm. oh well one day i was having a bad day and then matt left bubble tea on my stairs and like a little note with a bible verse and i thought that was really cute because if someone buys you bubble tea then duh they're the right person and and (laughs) and mine was the fry one when you gave me the first fry because then i'm like yo she's a real woman (laughs) um uh biggest pet peeve about the other person yo my biggest where do i start wow (laughs) well my biggest pet peeve about you is when you call me matthew or matt like yeah i know when she calls me matthew or matt she's mad at me because she'll just usually be like babe or whatever and then i'm just like i don't mm. call you that yeah she does she's fronting yeah, because right i'm now. thinking about that pig you know from the movie babe the pig wow wow <laughs> so mean okay but um i need to correct i think i think no, i think i think for mine it would be that like sometimes like matt is always like oh like this looks so good that is so good like you did this so amazing you did that so extraordinarily and then like i i feel like he just like over compliments and over encourages that sometimes i'm like are you lying like but i'm not when do i ever know I'm i told her one time this dress she showed me it looked like a potato sack so and then she told me these earrings that she wanted to wear. And I'm like, nah, I don't want those earrings. But I still wear them. But she still wore them. So, nah, I'm honestly, like, I'm not trying to. And I'm, we were having this conversation with someone today where we're like, like, a guy might be giving you, a, like, a certain amount of attention and, like, be complimenting you. And you might not be used to that because you're not used to a partner doing that for you. And some or people. you might not believe that. Yeah, or you yourself. might not believe that internally about yourself. But, like, I think you have to, like recognize some people do it because that's just the typical thing to do because they're just trying to they have ulterior motives but like honestly like i genuinely like think so many things that she does are so amazing and like she looks amazing and whatever outfit she wears so i'm not trying to be back like legit like it's really hard to find like something (laughs) that she does because she's so amazing um (laughs) what is something that we don't have in common Mm, Mm. something we don't have in common Do we? No, I think there's obviously. No, there's ones we're just trying to think of them right now. Something we don't have in common. Um, I mean, Matt can't really spell. Yeah, that's true. Greatest. That's true. Yeah. I mean, like that's not a knock to. You. It's just something. Nah. We don't have in common. Yeah. Um, hmm. He likes sports. I don't really particularly like sports. That's true. Um. He likes sushi. I don't like sushi. <laughs> Of anything no. anyways this is rapid fire <laughs> um last one if you could describe this person in one word what would it be amazing amazing no um hmm. oh i know mine i would say that you are an anomaly uh, if we're gonna like be like super uh, smart if we're gonna be super smart here and like say a synonym you are an outlier you're like different from the norm and you rise above what the status quo is for men. Um, and so I think I would describe you as my anomaly. <laughs> um, we're just both like, just like, because we're both like, our love languages are words of affirmation. Okay, wow, she's throwing shade. Um, <laughs> your home, that's my word. Because like, I don't like think my house? I'm stealing this from you because you told me one time, you're like, home is not a place. It's not like a destination. Um, home is anywhere I get to be when I'm with you and home is like getting to be with you. Um, so you make me feel like home wherever we are. Like and Jack and Rebecca. Comfort and peace. Like Jack and Rebecca. Like Jack and Rebecca. Yeah. Basically, basically guy. she's Jack and Rebecca in one person. <laughs> <laughs> this is us. Um, but yeah, so that ends our rapid fire. Um, guys, this is the end of our relationship episode on real community talks. Um, but just before um, we go, one thing I always do on my show is I like to honor people who are on here. And um, I just wanted to take the time to just honor this amazing woman and how um, amazing she is to me as a person, but amazing she is without me. <laughs> and um, like that, this is her, this is her like, you know, distracting because like she doesn't usually like to take on. I'm deflecting. Yeah, she's deflecting. No, but I, I tell her this all the time, like, like, you're not just an amazing person because you're amazing to me, but because even without me, take me out of the picture, you are so phenomenal in everything you do. 
And like I told you this before, there's nothing that you can't do. And like her heart for people and like the time that she gives up for people, like it, it inspires me to be a better version of me. And I'm telling you guys, like sometimes I get super lazy and I doubt myself and I am so fearful of things, but she literally is my peace. She literally gets me out of spiraling and gets me right on track to do the right things. And I said this before a little earlier, like Jesus, if you read about him in the Bible is, you know, hard to understand because we don't see him, but Jesus tells us that people will know us by our love and they'll know him by our love. And I, the one thing that I can say is, um, she is the most tangible expression of Jesus in my life. Um, not just, you know, why? Because I flip tables. I was going to say that because she flips tables sometimes <laughs> not, but you know what? She's, she's someone who doesn't, she doesn't stand for injustice it's and she's Jesus wept and I cried. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you support the disenfranchised. You like, we talk about this all the time. I'm the like, voice to the voice. Like, yeah. Like we have the, the same passions for the world. Look, um, I'm trying to make your logo. <laughs> yeah. Um, but nah you make me really enjoy life to the fullest and i get to enjoy living and and loving you and i feel like loving you is like one of the greatest things i get to do so thank you for being such an amazing person um and guys this isn't going to be the only time her guest episode she says she's coming on season five episode episode three three. so that's when we're going to get to know a little bit more about her but we hope you enjoyed this episode we hope you enjoyed these topical type of episodes comment below if you um you know something stood out to you or you want to continue the conversation drop a like um, share this whoever you know that's in a spot right now that needs to hear this send it to them guys thank you for taking the time to listen to us for this long i know we're not experts but we just wanted to bless you with our wisdom um so yeah thanks for tuning in happy valentine's Happy valentine's day and this is us signing out peace